What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Oh my God, what a day of NBA basketball, man. We had two series and the Denver Nuggets beat the Portland Trailblazers in six in a game where the Portland Trailblazers were up by double digits with just a few minutes left. And then the LA Lakers lose to the Phoenix. I'm sorry, not the LA Lakers lose. The Phoenix Suns win against the Lakers in six. There's so much, and I mean so much to talk about. You're probably a little confused because um, I don't have a microphone. And for a whole year I've been doing these recaps, I've held the microphone. But I read this study today that if you're a person that talks with their hands, which I am, if you're not able to talk with your hands, your brain is not working at full capacity. So I was like, hey, if that's the truth, I want to I want to give out the best content. I want to work at full capacity, so I'm going to free up my hands. I also made that up, but it feels about right. It feels about right. I, I feel like I'm more confident and I know what I'm talking about when my hands are moving. So there's so much to talk about today, and I like to get these recaps out on a timely manner. Um, So, so some of the things that are towards the back of my brain that I want to mention today may get saved for another video because I want to get this out because it is already 1230 Central Time and I'm just starting to record. I'm going to work my way backwards. I'm going to start off with the Phoenix Suns taking game six. And a convincing win, though the Lakers had a couple runs, it was over in the very beginning. If you watch Called Game Live, which is something that we tried Wednesday, um, I talked about a lot of different things, like the Celtics, and other people are asking me stuff, uh, go watch that. But in that, when we were previewing this Game 6, I said that the Phoenix Suns had to come out in Game 6 as if it was Game 7. As if there was no Game 7, because you cannot afford for Anthony Davis to get 70, 80% healthy. And what we saw today is that Anthony Davis was good to go. At least that's what they thought. He played a couple minutes and he immediately sat down and they were like, he's questionable to come out, but every NBA fan in the world that was watching this game knew that he was not going to be coming back. Um, it was bad, man. It was really bad. And I hate it um, because y'all know, I said this before, I was lightly rooting for the Phoenix Suns to win a series, nothing against the Lakers or anything, but I'm a Chris Paul fan. So I want to see my favorite player be successful, right? But I also wanted to see a good series. Also, I also wanted to see a healthy series. And it's unfortunate that a series like this where one of the hottest teams in basketball um, that came out, of no came out of nowhere is what people want to say with the Phoenix Suns going against the defending champion in the first round matchup and everybody had this team is seven, this team is seven, this team is seven, that it ended in six, but it wasn't like a fun six, if that makes sense, because of injuries. Chris Paul gets injured in game number one. Anthony Davis gets injured in game number three, tries to play game number four, is trash, doesn't play game number five, and he gets re-injured in game number six. Or I guess they said it wasn't a re-injury but he can't, his mobility was was down. And you can tell it was down, right? Anthony Davis has always been a guy that's like really good defensively. He's never won the Defensive Player of the Year award, but everybody knows Anthony Davis is one of the greater defenders in the league. But Monty Williams, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, they had a plan like, hey, we know this man is not looking good, so we're going to go at Anthony Davis. Nobody has ever had a game plan to go at Anthony Davis. As long as Anthony Davis has been on the basketball court, whether that was all the way in first grade or all the way now in the NBA playoffs of 2021, nobody has ever been like, we're going at Anthony Davis until today because they knew that he was injured. And it's unfortunate, like I said, that he re-aggravated his injury, but it's a part of the game, but it's the wor it is literally the worst part of any sport is injury. Um, but I got to take it at face value, man. The Finger Suns had a game plan and they executed very early on. They did not look afraid of the moment. At all. And a lot of that is Devin Booker, man. I tweeted, be legendary. I mean, I mean, like, that, those are the words of Kobe Bryant that, that was really put in the brain of Devin Booker. You can tell today he he was channeling his 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 tattoo. He's channeling what, uh, um, what Kobe had told him. Be legendary. Starting off this game, we had two players, two, two young light-skinned brothers go out and drop 20 in the first quarter in, in different games, which is crazy. Two young players, too. The NBA's in good hands, as you know. Uh, and from early on, you know, me and the guys always watch these games together, and we all we already knew it was over. Um, Anthony Davis had been out with his injury. Devin Booker couldn't miss. And, well, LeBron James wasn't looking like the LeBron James man you know. Um, if the Lakers wanted any chance, any chance to win this, even if Anthony Davis was healthy, it had to start with LeBron James. Now, LeBron James, if you look at it, 29, 7 assists, 9 rebounds. He, he hit three threes. He wasn't great. He wasn't great. And one of the questions I have posed to my guys multiple times in the history of our podcast um, was what would it take for for LeBron James not to be considered the best in a league right now? And and nobody's really been able to give me a, like a real life answer. Well, I think I think it was Mike that was like, in order for me to say that LeBron James is not the best player in the NBA right now, I need to see him under the biggest lights not perform again. And I, I would argue this is part of it. Now, he had a good game. I don't want people to misinterpret my words. He had a good game. 
more for Le- the LeBron James that I grew up with, the LeBron James that I know and love, going into a game six, this is a game that he was like, bro, I'm putting up 45 because I refuse to go home. And we didn't get that. And I'm not saying it's necessarily his fault because even going into the playoffs, he told us, like, bro, I'm not 100%. I'm going to play because I love the game basketball and I, I want to win another championship, but I'm not 100%. And there was a there was a time fourth quarter seven minutes and thirty seven seconds ago, um, around there, LeBron James in this game where his team is making a mini run, he looks at Frank Vogel, he's like, "I need a couple minutes," and it like it, it made my heart drop. And I know this is super dramatic, and I'm not trying to make it super dramatic, but it's like. LeBron James, at least in my eyes, I know everybody out there got their own opinions on LeBron James, yada, yada. He has been this superman of a player as long as I have been a fan of the NBA. And today was one of, and I'm not saying it's the only time, but one of the few times in my entire fandom where LeBron James looked human. LeBron James looked human in that moment. He asked for a sub, and they showed a camera of him walking over. His head is down. He's drenched in sweat. He's he's telling Marcus Saul, "Give me the booty, the booty cushion thing that they be sitting on." Marcus Saul was like, "Here, bro, here, here. We need you to <laughs> come back in two minutes. So if this is what's gonna do it, so it, it's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate. I don't know if this is it. I don't know if this is the turning point. Again, I don't want me people to misinterpret me. LeBron James was was still really good. LeBron James was great, but he might not be the best player in the league anymore." Which is okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's 36, as my guy Mark would say. He's 36. He might not be the best player in the league anymore. But that's okay. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. Um, the, the Lakers, others this series, none of them. None of them consistent. You know, Dennis Schroeder last game was 0 for 9 and became the first player in Lakers history in the playoffs, at least, um, to, to shoot that bad in a playoff game. The Lakers are a team that's notoriously in the playoffs. Um, and he did that. Today, he backed it up with a 20-point game, which is cool. Uh, KCP came back from his injury and dropped 19. But, like, I had to... Bro, if you watch my main channel, I had just gave Cal Kuzma a lot of love because I'm like, hey, if he ain't shooting the ball well, now he plays decent defense. He ain't turning the ball over. Might have been one of his worst games ever tonight. <laughs> this might have been one of his worst games ever. Alex Caruso gets injured as well. Um, Montrezl Harrell got early minutes after not playing the entire series practically because Frank Vogel was just trying to throw things at the wall because they just needed energy in that first quarter, bro. They came out flat, absolutely flat. And I got to get, again, a lot of praise to the Phoenix Suns for stepping on their necks. Now they go against the Denver Nuggets. Um, and I guess that series is going to start relatively early um, or like soon. Um, and Chris Paul, you can tell he's still not 100%. He had some big shots when it mattered. He made some big plays when it mattered. But it, it doesn't seem like he's 100% still. And, of course, the different Nuggets are not 100% either. So I'm I'm curious to see what that series would look like. Um, I'm, I'm not going to make a prediction or anything because this is not super fun to me. But I'm, I'm excited to see what that series looks like. I saw um, Nick Young tweet it. Like, man, it's about to be the worst playoff ever, man. Nobody wants to see Jazz versus blah, blah, blah. And nobody wants to see this or that. And I, I understand where he is coming from because... LeBron in the playoffs is good for business. Whether you love him or you hate him, you're going to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he's out for the second time in three years. He's, I mean, two years ago, he didn't make it at all. But as a second playoff run, we won't get a long strength, or a long amount of time with LeBron James. And I'm curious to see what the what the numbers look like. You know what I'm saying? I'm curious to see what the numbers look like. So, you know, Laker, the Lakers offseason is going to be super interesting because this hasn't been... If you look at what they did in the offseason, you immediately thought, man, you had a Dennis Schroeder, Marcus Gasol, Montres Hale, who just got back. Or the, they got two of the top three candidates for uh, six man of the year added onto the roster. Another year of Alice Caruso being solid. Wesley Matthews, they pick up Ben McLemore, who plays 30 seconds, I guess. They had a good offseason, but none of them showed up. And a, and a lot of that is due to the injuries and this and that. None of them showed up. So I'm curious to see what uh, Rob Palenka does to retool this team because they got to be better. Um, the competition in the Western Conference is not getting easier by the year. If anything, this is going to be even harder next year. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, people are already doing the the bubble thing because both of the bubble uh, conference champions are out in the first round. I'm not, get, I'm not getting into that, bro. Shout out to the Finger Suns. I'm excited to see y'all on this playoff run. Let's go to the other game of the day. Again, like I said, like I, said I got a lot to say. Like LeBron James with two minutes left. And I understand at this point it's like a 12-point game. He didn't get back on defense for like three plays in a row. Like, by the time he was back on defense, it was five seconds on the shot clock. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, so he's out there arguing across. Okay, let's get to this different Nuggets win or the collapse of the Portland Trailblazers. It's a little bit of both, man. Michael Porter Jr. comes out immediately, 20 points. Uh, made Jokic get into foul trouble early. Feel like it didn't matter because uh, they didn't need Jokic to score at all in this first quarter because Michael Porter Jr. was doing those things. And then later in this game, Again, I know he's a big part of them coming back. I think he had 22 in the first quarter. He ended with 26 or something like that. He was a good part of them coming back. But it was later moments in this game where he was like jackballing because he had been hot earlier. And I'm like, ah, that's the that's the love-hate relationship with Michael Porter Jr. Because he would take those crazy shots and hit six of them in the first quarter. And then he'll take some more crazy shots in the fourth and go 0 for 4. Um, but hey, they end up getting his win. Aaron Gordon, big, big for the team. I can't believe that Austin Rivers plays such a big part of this. Jokic, 36, 6, and 8, and big baskets. And not to mention Monte Morris. Monte Morris has is looking like a steal of a contract. And I felt like I knew that when it happened. But I didn't expect this man to be in a game six of a playoff game, um, dropping 22 and all. The Jermichael Green game existed too. So I, I love the way the Denver Nuggets are orchestrated. Because even without, they're missing three rotational players, as we all know. Jamal Murray, Will Barton, P.J. Dozier. These are guys that play big time minutes for them all season long. All gone. Um... But the others, like me and the guys always talk about the others when it comes to the playoffs because, yes, Jokic can have the same stat line. And if the others don't show up, then it don't matter. Just game five of this series is an exact example of that. Damian Lillard had 55. But the others didn't show up. They shot like one for 19 in the fourth quarter, overtime and double overtime. If the others don't show up, it don't matter what type of MVP candidate. It don't matter what type of performance you put on because you need the others. And Jokic's putting up 36, 6, and 8. And his others playing well is a recipe for them being great. So big, big W for the uh, Denver Nuggets um, front office because they, they they added layers to this team where, hey, we can afford an injury here. Now, yes, I still don't know if the Denver Nuggets are a champ. They're not, I don't think they're a championship quality team. And if they were healthy, they would be. But this just showcases, like, hey, they can be when it matters. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them. Um, I, I cannot believe the Portland Trailblazers went out the way they did. Um, being up by double digits was just a few minutes left and really like talk about collapsing that's exactly what happened and I saw people like looking at Dame because Dame shot with like one for seven in the fourth quarter or something like that and it's just it's unfortunate because Damian Lillard gave us all this series like I said a 55 point game and I think they even mentioned this on the broadcast he dropped 55 in a game he dropped 55 in game five right um and he's probably just gassed he played all but six minutes in a double overtime game. He's probably just gas, and he's in the the fourth quarter of this game, and he just didn't have it. And this is the mo. These are the moments where you need the others. For example, Devin Booker early. I mean, Devin Booker in the fourth quarter wasn't the Devin Booker we saw in the first two quarters. That was okay. They had built this lead, and then the others stepped up. None of the others stepped up for for the Trailblazers today. None of them. When it mattered, at least for a moment, they did. Because they had this, they had this what seemed like a comfortable lead in a game six at home, you know. But nobody else decided to show up. This offseason should be the teardown of this current court, one hundred percent. I love the CJ and Dame backcourt, but you probably hit the ceiling a couple years ago when you made the conference finals run. I can't see Dame and CJ being on the same team and that being a championship quality team. It's hard. The team does not defend, and it boils down to hey. We don't have perimeter defenders like that. We can we can say we trust Norman Powell at 6'3", who's 6'3", small, 4. We can say we trust Robert Covington. Oh, but Robert Covington's got the Jokic assignment now, a guy that can guard um, guard guards. He's got the Jokic assignment. Anthony Simon's a good shooter, but he's not a defender. We, we bring in Ronnie Hollis Jefferson, but we got him guarding Jokic. We don't have any perimeter defenders. And 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 I love CJ, bro. CJ, if you want to come on to call game, bro, I would welcome you with open arms. This series was not the CJ we know and love. I know statistically he averaged like 20-something. I know. I know that. But if you're watching this game and you, you can tell that this wasn't a good series for him. I don't care what the numbers say. Watching these games, it wasn't a good series for him. He had the biggest shoe in the world in game five, and it was part of the reason they lost. He's stepping on the outline. So I expect, this is what I expect from them. Terry Stotts gets fired. Last straw. Damian Lillard, this, I, I, big, th big thing. And I know we've been going on for a while. Like I said, I can ramble all day, and I might ramble again tomorrow. Damian Lillard needs to look himself in the mirror and say, it's okay to let go. This man has been the number one fan of Terry Stotts as Terry Stotts is coming to the team. You know what I'm saying? And Terry Stotts, for the most part, has been cool for them. But it is time. It might have been time last year, if we're being honest. But this guy, Damian Lillard, is so attached to Terry. And I understand loving your guy, loving your coaches. But for you that wants to win a championship for the city of Portland, you have to realize Terry not the guy. 
CJ is your bro. He's probably not the guy. Not if you want to win this championship here. So this is what I would like to see for this team. It's going out on a limb. You trade CJ for a wing player that can defend. I don't know who that is. I'm not proposing the actual trades. And you re-sign Norman Powell to play the CJ role. The two guard, the off guard that can get you a bucket. CJ's obviously better than Norman Powell, but they have a similar type game. I and and and, and the way Nurkic is talking, I don't even is Nurkic even I don't even know if Nurkic is a free agent. The way Nurkic is talking in his post game interviewers, his exit interviews, they were asking, um, what are the chances you back? And I I could have swore he was under contract. He's like, things have to change for me to come back. It's probably hinting that Terry Stotts has to be the guy to go because I can't imagine many people in that locker room other than Damian Lillard is in love with the way Terry Stotts is going doing things. Like two years ago, Nurkis was a big part of the offense. He was playmaking. Like, like for really, he, they, a lot of the offense was going through him. They didn't get that this season at all. And maybe that is part of Nurkis being a shell of his former self. Um, but he, he played that role pretty well. And this year he didn't get that. So he wants to see changes. And he said it has to depend on his role. Um, I thought that the Portland Trailblazers, realistically, I thought that the Portland Trailblazers had an amazing offseason going into this. I was super high on this team. I caught an L. I thought bringing in Robert Covington was going to be great. He shot perfect from the field. He had 10 rebounds, three steals. He also had to guard Jokic, so, you know what I'm saying? Um, it really hurts that, like I said, Nurkic wasn't amazing. Um, but you can't, like, you can't have a team where Enos Cancer can't, Enos Cancer can't play. You know, in the playoff series, he get can't cancer can't what they say can't play cancer is that what it's called? Can't play cancer. I thought they won the offseason. I thought they were one of the winners at least of the offseason with the Robert Covington trade. They got another wing defender on a team they can't defend, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So I'm expecting big time changes for them. I cannot wait to see this Phoenix versus Denver series, um, because I I, th I think I think they match up very well. I think this could be a very long series, um, just because there's no answer for Nikola Jokic. We found that out. Whether it be this series, last year, N N I mean, Jokic have been, has been an amazing playoff player since the moment he stepped into the playoffs a few years ago. So there's no answer for him. But I think DeAndre Ayton is going to have a, it's going to be a good duel. It's going to be a good duel between those two. The one thing that I worry for the Denver Nuggets is they don't have a Devin Booker, um, no, of course there's no Devin Booker stopper, but they don't have a single player on this roster that I would trust to guard Devin Booker when it matters. Austin Rivers did a solid job guarding, but he's also going to his Dame and CJ, who are both like 6'2", 6'3". Devin Booker's a bigger guard. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we see some Shaq Harrison, but he's also 6'3". He's a good defender. He's also 6'3". Maybe you throw um, Aaron Aaron Gordon on Devin Booker like you threw Aaron Gordon on Damian Lillard. I don't know. I think it's going to be a chess match between Michael Malone, Coach Michael Malone, and um, and, and, and Coach uh, Monty Williams. I, I think it will be. So we got all but one series done. And then tomorrow might be the end of the next one. We don't really know. And then we're on to the second round. If I am grading the first round based on what we got today, I, I mean, I would I would say for the most most part, the first round has been underwhelming. I would say that. Not saying I'm not having fun. <laughs> the job is to sit here and watch basketball. I'm having fun whenever I'm doing it. But I would take underwhelming for a, a year that we were like, hey, all of these, ooh, ooh, this is going seven. This is going seven. Some of them went six, but it wasn't like a fun six. Like we had blowouts. In these six game series. The Knicks versus Hawks going five was boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other than the antics between Trey Young becoming a villain, everything else was pretty boring. The Bucks dominating the Miami Heat, boring. We already knew Brooklyn versus Boston was probably gonna be boring. Same thing with Philly versus Washington. We kinda knew that that was gonna be boring. But but yeah, all right. That's all I got. This is a longer video. Um, I might do another one about the Lakers future and, and things because everybody loves Lakers talk. There's so many Lakers fans out there. I got I got to capitalize on that. Let me know what you think about today's games, the series being wrapped up. It's LeBron washed. <laughs> that opened up a door.